Welcome to the AND Podcast. I'm Dr. Mark Leonard, and I am your host on your journey to becoming AND. Over 20 years of research and development, I have been looking into what makes some people so successful while others just continue to struggle and fail. But there's one thing I found in all the research that is missing, and I want to help give you that key, how you can be high performing a high achiever, and a disciple of Jesus Christ. Follow me as we journey together. Welcome to the Become a High Achiever and Disciple of Christ podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Mark Leonard. And I'm so excited that we're going to be launching this new podcast in this new format where we will be exploring this really interesting intersection of how you can become a disciple of Christ, but how you can also be a high achiever because sometimes they are in opposition to each other. And we're going to talk about that today. I have probably my all-time favorite co-host. It is my amazing wife, Becky Leonard. How are you? Good. It's so good. So good to have you. And I thought it would be fun to invite people into our kitchen into our conversations that we tend to have in the morning and just let people listen in to some of the in-depth thoughts that we have about becoming. And so I'm really excited for this. So as we start, let's maybe talk a little bit about why this podcast was born. And I, I would love to get your ideas. What, As you've heard me and as you and I have talked over the last several months about this podcast idea and kind of where this formulated. What are your thoughts about what is this podcast and who is it for? This podcast is a science behind personal development and God's words about personal development. I think we like to think that they can't be the same and we don't realize how much they're in alignment. And there's a lot of podcasts out there on the science of the brain and the science of eating and the science of whatever. And I just thought you're so good at disseminating information and making it understandable to me and other people that I just thought it'd be really cool if if you were the science guy behind personal development and how you can be a better person and how that works with also being all that God wants us to be. Yeah, and I think one of the things I've been most fascinated about is it's a question I had that started many, many years ago as I was going through uh, my master's program and I was really trying to understand human development, human performance, how do people think, how do we create learning environments? And, and I was possibly being plagued with a, a singular question of why is it that an individual, somebody just seems to, no matter what they do, it turns to gold. And why can't other people have that same experience? And that's actually what brought me to my doctorate degree at Pepperdine University was I was so fascinated by that idea of why are there just people or teams or families or organizations that are just absolute high achievers. And no matter what they did, it's just like the most amazing thing. And I wanted to understand more about that, but the deeper, deeper I got into it and the deeper I got into the science, I started listening to a lot of podcasts, reading a lot of books. And it seems like there was this overarching theme that I hear over and over again in personal development. And it's oh, focus on you. I do what feels good or get rid of all of your friends and because they're holding you back. Every time I heard that, it just rubbed me the wrong way as a disciple of Christ. I thought, hang on, why does that seem so, I guess, doctrinally wrong? And, and although I will not be a voice that will speak for the prophets or extrapolate or interpret scripture for everyone or for God's voice, I do want to bring a different voice to scripture to show that personal development when done correctly aligns 
very well with the gospel of Jesus Christ, that we are supposed to love one another, that we are supposed to forgive, that we are supposed to look after our neighbor and ask ourselves, what would Jesus do? Probably one of my favorite bracelets I remember as a child was a WWJD, right? It seemed there was a period of time that everyone had a, what would Jesus do? WWJD bracelet on. And it seems that this world is moving further and further away from asking the right questions that actually draw us to becoming high achievers as well as disciples of Christ at the same time. And that's, that's one of the things I really want to explore over this semester is looking at how we can have that intersection of those two things. But as we get into that, I'm, I want to talk about the word become. It's my favorite. Yeah, right? What do you love about the word become or become? You and I talked a lot about how, like, God's whole purpose is for us to learn and grow, to become something. And in the scientific world, there's the whole, like, growth mindset versus fixed mindset. That's what the world calls it, right? But I think that the word become is the is exactly what God wants us to do with a growth mindset. He wants us to keep learning and growing and and like developing into our best selves and in somebody that's got that fixed mindset somebody that is like well i am who i am and you know you can't change me um they're the epitome of what satan wants from us he doesn't want us to grow and become anything he wants us to get stuck in our like mired down in our own junk and and so i feel like the the world's answer to um, personal development with growth and fixed is exactly what Satan and God is. I just love the idea that we don't have to be stuck in whatever it is that our struggles or trials or weaknesses, that God wants us to learn how to move beyond all of that and to become more. Yeah, I, I love the idea of becoming and, and me, just like you, one of the most frustrating things I hear is when people say that this is just who I am, or I don't have the ability to learn or study or understand like you do. And I think to myself, well, then if that was true, if that was absolutely true, we would be the same people today that we were a year ago. Then there would be absolutely no growth, no change, no difference. We would have no new experiences. We would not look at the life through our lives through a different lens. We would only look through it through the same lens of the same thing day in and day out. And yet we know that we are to become because as you look at the life of a child and you watch them learn to roll over and then learn to rock and crawl and stand and walk and fall and walk and run. We, we experience and we visualize and we see what growth is supposed to look like. But for some reason, when we get old and I'll say quote unquote wise, we begin to think, oh, it's not okay to fall. It's not okay to trip. It's not okay to make a mistake. We're supposed to be perfect. I love this idea that as we get older, we begin to think we're not supposed to make these mistakes. And yet we're absolutely okay when our baby or our child trips and falls, skins our knee, and we pick them up and we, and we brush them off. And yet we begin to say as we're older, I'm better than that. I don't need that. Or in effect say, I don't need Jesus Christ in my life to help me brush off and to grow. So I think becoming is a really important aspect of a high achiever. They're constantly looking for ways that they can improve while grounding themselves in the reality of the blessings that they have. Well, and if you're not becoming, then you're not utilizing the atonement of Jesus Christ. Nope. Which I'm just saying, like, well, <laughs> like, isn't that the whole point? Like, 
we're supposed to learn from our mistakes and we're supposed to become more through the atonement of Jesus Christ. And if we're not doing that, if we're just who we are, then we are literally not utilizing that power. Oh, could be. Yeah, right? I mean, that is an absolutely true. It blows my mind that people get stuck in that fixed mindset. Uh, another element of proof that we are not supposed to have a fixed mindset is if we were to have a fixed mindset, we would never learn to count. We would never learn to read. We would never learn to walk. We would never learn to play a game. We would never learn to have friends. We would never learn in our job. We would just be the same day in and day out. And I think that's Satan's plan is to make us feel like, oh, you're all alone. Stuck. Yes. Stuck. I hate times in my life when I feel stuck. Me too. Yeah. It's. I love Brendan Bouchard uses the word um, caged, right? Yeah. I love, I love that because I think that feeling stuck is the epitome of feeling caged. Like he can't, he can't get out. He can't breathe free. And uh, that's exactly where Satan wants us. That's his favorite place for us to be. It, it, yeah, a hundred percent is. Let's let's make you feel isolated, alone, inward, right? Inward. You go in when you're feeling depressed or feeling down. When you when you don't want to talk with someone, that's all inward. Which another term for fixed or stuck or caged mindset. However, the great antithesis to a caged, a fixed, inward mindset is connection. Mm -hmm. Doing what we sometimes don't want to do is to connect. Yeah, when I'm feeling stuck, that's exactly what I don't want to do or is to reach out to other people. Well, so, so, so you don't you like a whole come on to me because I'm so gonna that's reality. Yeah, no. That's because that's that's exactly where Satan wants me to feel and slide. A hundred percent. When I feel caged, when I feel stuck, I'm the same way. I I don't want to connect with other people yet. Christ was very clear on what we do. He says, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden. He's saying, I recognize the load you're carrying is tough and it's weighing you down and it's making you feel stuck. But if we want to get out of it, there's only one answer. I, I love what I love what was said in church today. The answer is always Jesus. That's it. That's it. Well, I guess uh, my podcast career is over because we just made the, the answer to everything. That's it. Like the Bible drop. Like the Well, thank goodness uh, I am still growing and learning just like each of you. And uh, over the next couple months, we're, we're going to break this into a full semester. And I was thinking over the next several months, we'll really dive deep into hope. I think that's a good thing to do this time of year. Like, 2024 is starting and a lot of people look at a new year as like a new opportunity for growth and change. Yeah. And so I think that starting a new year with there's hope is a, it's cool. I, I, I love it. I, the hope, hope is what brings me joy. What hope is what wakes me up in the morning. Oh. Um, Oh, I hope today is going to be a good day. I hope I can accomplish what I want. I hope, I hope, I hope. Right? We, we say these things in our mind all the time. How many of us really believe in hope? And we're going to break down some of the myths about hope. Uh, one, this was a big part of my dissertation, was the psychology of hope. Uh, but it's also become a huge part of my gospel journey. And my doctoral journey is understanding hope for ourselves. And so over the next several months, we're going to be discussing hope and how to have more hope and how to get out of feeling discouraged or use the popular term, how do we break through our fear? 
or what, what is it that what is it that people say you're driving me crazy and just uh, i don't know the, the, a lot of personal development junkies talk about fear uh they say that oh you you're just afraid no it's actually wrong it's totally false it's a lie you're not afraid uh you're discouraged and the antithesis the, the opposite of discouraged is courage and so we're going to talk about courage and hope and and how to have that in jesus christ i i'm looking forward to the next several uh, episodes where we take a deep dive into that and utilize scripture to back us up to show how we can have these two things together well and i what i'm equally as excited about is to show both like the the science of it or the the research and and what it's really cool for me to see like people come out with new research and have it say like oh look for example, um, you were telling me recently about um, agency and how they're proving the agency is like this big sort of thing. And well, we as disciples of Christ already understand that agency is crucial to living on this earth, right? But the science shows what God's already told us. And I am really excited to show people like both. Yeah. And and to, to be able to have people see like how they can really be aligned. I think that the more successful we become, I know me as a mom and wife and student, and I've done a lot in the realm of network marketing and then entrepreneur type, you know, business owner and all this. And there's this thought process out in the world that says that you've got to give up something in order to be successful. And that often that means you've got to give up aspects of God and what he expects of you in order to be successful. And it, I was talking about this with somebody just yesterday that they were saying that somebody that they know that some kind of an ecclesiastical leader is, is like s supposedly this great guy when it comes to the church stuff, but he's also a lawyer and he's despicable as a lawyer. And, and that, that's not what God wants of us, right? But, but you don't have to be that. You can be aligned and that science and scripture actually shows us together that you can be the same person. In all aspects of your life. One of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you the research. I'm going to bring you the gospel talks, the scriptures, the doctrine, the personal development, and we're going to interweave them. And then I'm going to create a place where you'll be able to go and download all of those resources for every episode. I am so excited about that. I love that when I listen to other podcasts. And they're like, oh, look, this thing that we've been talking about, this, you know, here's the, here's the talk about it, or here's the study about it or whatever, and you can go and read that. So I'm super excited that you're going to have that for everybody. I, I can't wait. I, I'm so excited that you're here. I hope that you join us in this journey of really becoming a high achiever and a disciple of Christ. I really want to bold, underline, capitalize. And because you can be both. And we're going to really look at that intersection of how you can become a high achiever and become a disciple of Christ in all aspects of your life. Because if you're trying to do it in one area of your life and neglect another area, you're doing it wrong. And we're going to show you how you could marry those two things together. For every aspect of your life, your business, your marriage, your friendships, your health, your fitness, your mindset, you're just developing an excellent, becoming life. So make sure you keep tuning in. Please, if you like this and you're excited about the next few, share this podcast, like it, help me out, download it. We're going to be sharing even more great things with you. Uh, and I cannot wait to get to you. All of the great resources that are going to help you become a wonderful, amazing, absolute high achiever and disciple of Christ.